Welcome to the Kiwi Cuts podcast. My first guest is one of my best buddies, Fanine Witchley of Munster Rugby. Good evening, Fanine. How are you? How are you, brother? So sorry. Good to see you. So, talk to me. What's the plan? Uh, I will get a skin fade and a small bit off the top. So Perfect. 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 Better. Good to have you here anyway as well. Yeah, it's nice to be down in Cork now again. Life's good? I'll go Jan again this weekend now. Um, playing should be so away. So it's always a tough challenge. When are you striking on for that? Uh, no, on Thursday. Games on Friday night, like, so it's not too bad. Back Saturday, that's a bit of crappy travel. Like, but. Yeah, it's short, sweet. Um, so, let's get into the podcast. Let's get it started. Let's get the ball rolling. Um, so, first question. I suppose a lot of people won't know, but you've been one of my closest buddies from, <coughs> from the get-go. I suppose we first started to see each other when... Um, when we were in, what, the first year was it? When we were in yeah, the first bars. year, yeah. We probably got closer, second or third year, properly, when we both started playing rugby a lot. Like, yeah, when we, got it, when we got into rugby, yeah, I was kind of... So we always had... You came from a background that, I suppose, with your family, that there was always rugby going, and then things got a bit serious, I suppose, when the cadets came along, between both of us. Um, and I suppose they went to training, and enjoy, enjoying that as well. There was good parts and good bit of fun within it. Um... So it's then, Joe, leading on for that, I suppose we, we played with Bantry at a young age. Um, I was always hooking and you are always up my ass. In second row, yeah. <laughs> yeah, having spot to the, to the right of me and then, so we had Paddy and Paddy other hooking. Who's, who's, who's second row with you actually again? Myself and Kev. Kev, Kev yeah. all the way up, yeah. Sure. My case the, was filling the out time as well. Yeah, the bond has still always been there between all of us. Um, so it's going back to that as well, Joe, with us growing up, I suppose a lot of people... Fanine was actually uh, Fanine was actually my first ever haircut uh, back in uh, the summer of 2014. I don't know how many of you see it and uh, both of our Instagrams, we had it up there when I opened the business. Fanine actually put up put up uh, a whole post. And then I yeah, that was Thursday, sure. Yeah. That was, I mean, Mom brought out your grandfather's clippers, was it, back yeah, in the day? Yeah, that's what it was, yeah. So you said you give it a bash. It was a bit of fun, right? It was, uh, <laughs> It's a dodgy, <laughs> dodgy haircut, to say the least. Venture disco or something, wasn't it? Yeah, it was uh, one of them, uh, <laughs> one of the beautiful ages. But look, it's nice to actually have you on the chair as well today with that. Um, so it was then, Joe, our band stayed always close throughout the rugby, even though you went down the path of rugby and uh, I ended up taking the hairdressing transition here. You know, you, I got knocked off the the you know, the. Um, the youth monsters at that time and this was you continued on to get to your into pros and uh so the big the big change i found i suppose that i suppose in transition year was we're in separate classes which was a bit annoying but i think the fact you're from fifth year then when you uh when you ventured on to ross cray um to boarding school yeah i was sure i got a chance to go to ross cray and i couldn't miss it like do you know no. it was difficult to leave but after fourth year we kind of bonded a lot then we did with the whole Community company and all that kind of stuff, like, and play a lot of rugby together, and then, like, move on into fifth year, which was different, like, you know, especially being a boarding school, we for three or four weeks. We couldn't, yeah, it was, it's, it's, uh, I suppose that, that was the hardest thing that I found was the separation between both of us for that length of time, but I suppose it nearly grew us closer as best friends as well. Um, so it's Joe going for Bantry being a you were never late for school anyway. Well, yeah. <laughs> there was enough, uh, there was enough, uh, I was always late, yeah. <laughs> but uh. Talk to me about the Joe going to Ross Cray and the the difference in say discipline and uh, Joe. I suppose you you had a structure compared to Bantry Joe. You have a big family. Um, Joe, there was Josh was in school at the time. There was Letitia, there was Saskia. I think Nathan was only was was Nathan, Nathan was still there when we were in first year. Was when it? We were in first year. Nathan was in sixth year. Yeah. And he moved on after that, but like you know yourself, like getting up every day with teaching Saskia and stuff being late or Josh being late or whatever. It's a lot different. Who's the worst? When I was, Josh was always the worst. <laughs> Last to get up out of bed. But um, I know, like, in Ross Gray, it was different because all I had to do was just concentrate on myself and get up in the morning and have breakfast and straight into school. Everything was there, like, which was easy, like, you know. Talk to me about the routine. Did you, <clears throat> did you feel that was one of the bigger factors that... Oh, uh, yeah, like, they, they pushed me on, definitely, because we used to just leave after class, straight away after school, and... Uh, straight out onto the pitch, out and pitch for an hour and a half, and then in for food. After that, then you know, we study and stuff like that, like which helped um, school wise as well, you know. I was yeah. never that studious in, in venture school, I felt anyway, I didn't get a chance to study at home, like there's a lot of distractions at home, you know, whereas 
allocating study times and stuff help a lot, like actually put your head down and I suppose I suppose not not in a bad way, but it was it was the first time that you gotta be a, a bit selfish towards yourself as well because so you had no distractions that you knew, right? This is I was up here to yes, to get better at rugby and then I suppose with studies as well, like because Joe have you a big family, Joe trying to get the space to do homework and then Joe time even with rugby, Joe like because Joe you were living out in Kamola, which was Joe was a fifteen it was fifteen minute Joe drive into into town any time with training that you're leaving, you're nearly leaving you know forty minutes before training by the time you get ready and all that. Where when you're at your in Rossquay, it was straight onto the pitch and there was Joe, everything was there I suppose at your doorstep, which is a big asset towards getting routine structure everything with you remember like those trips to Limerick or whatever an hour and a half up an hour and a half back down and you know even going to park you were spending more like that was the one thing as well when I when I was on it as well that time was you were spending more time in the car than on the pitch which is tough on the body like the body started taking its toll as well which is uh, well, yeah like you're going training for what like an hour and a half two hours you to travel up to Cork for an hour an hour back down never get a chance to any study or whatever so it was handy for me like after school just to go straight out onto the pitch and then no 6 to 8 like you'd have to study and then 9 to 10 again like after study yeah. like, so it was just it was way easier like. so then moving on from that this was like the big thing coming out of that was one of the biggest medals within in schools rugby to date um, when yeah, you senior cup yeah, in your first year of rugby especially yeah I, like, compared to the Munster senior cup I feel like that it's way more promoted and stuff like that, like, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, like... Oh, they so make a way bigger deal, like, it's all yeah. over the telly and... What was it like playing TV for the first time? Like, seeing, I used to be, like, I used to remember down the Maritime, watch it with uh, Ian and myself and oh, uh, nuts, Kevin. Man. It was nuts, like, compared to... Oh, we kind of grown up with, like, six or seven a train and then... Yeah. Maybe ten people, fifteen people watching a match or whatever to, you know, maybe two or three thousand people watching it and obviously being on telly, like... Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's crazy, right? Because uh, it's weird, like I suppose, as we could kind of say, it was the Bantry invasion. I suppose I moved up, like there was with yeah, Tim Cole and and uh, Philip. Philip, yeah. But then Joe having Tim Tim Foley as your uh, as your captain as well, another Bantry man, but a skipperine trainer, is he? <laughs> yeah, I moved across. Yeah, but no, it was it's uh, it was cool, Joe. Even there, I remember. So it was the semi final against, was it a semi or quarter final against Black Rock? Was it was that? the quarter final, yeah, yeah. fifth year. Where he made the match. First time ever, like, you know, everyone or whatever, everyone went nuts. Like, yeah. The, the reaction from all the old people, especially the past students, like, they were literally coming up to us crying after the game, like, and it was just a memorial thing, really, for them, like. Yeah, it's quite funny, this was uh, for the first game when I made the reckless journey up to Rascoe to actually cut your hair beforehand. <laughs> Oh and yeah, it's all over here. Jeez, yeah. I wasn't didn't sit well at all. No, it uh, Pete Swanee Pool wasn't happy at all. He thought we'd take us off task and we were too worried about our looks and that kind of stuff, like compared to actually being, you know, worrying about the game and thinking about the game and stuff like that, like but uh. it's Joe then like moving on, I suppose from that you'd uh what was your next biggest goal but I suppose then like winning the senior cup was huge. That was uh That was in fifth year, yeah, and then yeah. in sixth year we got to the final. So it'd been spot of in sixth year. Phil was starting on the wing actually that year, that year as well. Yes. But, um, yeah, we lost uh, to Belbo in in, in sixth year. Um, and after that, then I didn't make the nineteens. And was, was that a on? big, Joe? Like you not making the nineteens? Did that? How did you take that? Because like I remember the time when I got knocked off. It's it's a very hard thing, Joe. Like Joe, to keep your dedication and your uh, Joe, your morals, Joe, your interest when knowing, like. It's called a spade a spade. It, it, it is it is cutthroat. Like you, you uh, I don't know. I don't take this in a bad way, but I think like one thing that I found with you, you're you're always the arrogant kind of that. Not in a bad way, but you were the fella that you turn around and you'd uh, if someone said you're not going to make it, you were proving to them that you will make. And I think that's a big thing that's stuck to you since. And I believe that as a close friend, where that's why you've got to where you have because you work your ass off to get to that, that you want, you want the best, you know what's best. Um, yeah, but sure, I was lucky that time because literally two or three weeks after the squad was named for the, or the 19s, I was told that I was going to get a cap for the Munster oh, Straits yeah. against Ulster. Yeah. So that kind of just literally motivated me for 
keep Just going. Boys, keep going. And but then, like, getting your first cap once there is, and then, was it within a year that, did you go out and, did you, did yeah, you No, I, I capped, yeah, I capped about two years later, then that was in, I should in the park against the Dragons, like, yeah. which was unreal, like, it was, like, especially uh, with Josh being on the team as well. Yeah, so like, that's. very special, like, for us and the family, like. I suppose, your dad experience, and then, your dad experience, then we're playing with, with Jace, and then in, in, uh, in, with Young Munster as well, which was, so yeah, see the that first pitch. time we played together, yeah, that was my first year of school. I came back from injury and I ended up playing against um, Newcastle West, I think actually it was. Yeah, which uh, is... Uh, I came off the bench or something because I came back from concussion. It was the first time I ever playing with a brother, but like, I couldn't believe it was Jason, seeing as he's such an age gap. He was like 27 at the time when I was only 18 or something. Yeah. Like um, but yeah, that was special as well. Like, he's, even the, he's kind of coaching you see now at the moment as well, so which is going well. And he's just... It, it's big. The rugby, the rugby's never going to leave your family anyway. If it's anything like your, oh, especially the driver like that. Like, yeah, that uh, keeps the whole thing going. Uh, but general. he always did. Like it was. Uh, so any time you go up, there was. It's all rugby game on, even if it was an old DVD of 2006, 2008, or Hyden Cup DVD or something like that. Like it'll always be on. Like or it, well, if it wasn't that, it was a trad session. So we're having. But your mother would come over with this gun. And two of us would be there. <laughs> Could be stupid hours in the morning, but you know they're they're the hours of that. Yeah, but then it'd be nearly six o'clock in the morning before we'd release it, and we'd we'd see what <laughs> more funny out the news of what happened over the night. But oh, that's the fashion like Joe. I see her as a second mother as well, which is yeah, of course. But that's the same as your mom as well. She yeah. used to go to after school and train out the back euro. Somebody used to spring. <laughs> oh there. god! When you look back and like the mother actually said to me coming up this morning, she was like. Uh, don't forget as well when you tried that meal plan between the two of you and like just cooking a salad she was going through pictures there because you know, the sister's wedding coming up that she had a picture of the two of us was the most ridiculous looking plate of food that you could have like but, so that, they're the moments that you kind of enjoy as well that you know you look back on as well in time um, talk to me about Limerick uh, how you find it there is it is like the, oh, so it's a move from one going from Ross Joe Bantry then to then Ross Craig into, into Limerick, like Joy, you're living with Dan Walsh and you're living with Alan Tyne, and then yeah, Josh. So a very easy transition for me, like, because yeah. we and Tyne went to school together, and obviously I knew Dan from, he was a year above me at what, Munster. Yeah. So I kind of knew the lads I was moving into, which was grand. And then Cookie's house, yeah. Into the Cookie's house, yeah. And then it was the area, so Josh, like, when Ben Kilkenny moved out, Josh just kind of took his place and went straight into my old room and I moved upstairs to the bedroom. But um, I don't know, it's been fine. I like Limerick. I think. I don't think it's half as bad as everyone thinks. Makes you know, makes it out to be or whatever. And it's close to training. Yeah. Joe, that's a lot of it as well. The <coughs> convenience of Joe, where you're living, like Joe, it'd be different if you're commuting from Cork every day. Your body just couldn't, as you said there, like Joe, coming down this evening as well, which I appreciate you do coming down. But to the fact of, oh, I know it's only an hour and a half journey, yeah. but it's just it takes a toll as well. If you do it, it every does. week, or whatever, it's fine every now and again. But if you do it every day or every week, it's it's very difficult, you know. Yeah, yeah, and like. So it's living in Limerick is as you said you're lucky enough you're you're living in Castle Troy isn't it? It's just and it's, yeah we're living in Hazelwood State like it's it's a perfect spot in fairness it's very close to the college only five or six minutes drive down there every morning and every evening which is grand like and it's handy for college as well getting across in the evenings and things like that. Up to the college. Yeah, I'll be going to the library. Yeah, um, well, like, so your routine like in like what what would just go through a bit of a synopsis of your routine of how. <coughs> Joe, like just your day to day with Joe training and then living in Limerick, Joe. This was Joe your evening times and then. Yeah, well, it's not too hectic, man. It's like it's yeah. on, on a Monday we normally just preview the game from the, the week before, and then by Tuesday then you're kind of looking over the team you're going to play and look at their their strengths and their weaknesses and how you're going to play against them and things like that. Like and then come Wednesday you have day off and normally a physio or you know maybe a massage or a rub or whatever and other than that like. You, and then you're kind of just preparing for the game at the weekend, yeah. whatever captain's run on a Thursday or Friday and back into the weekend travelling again. Um, as I say, we're travelling Thursday now and, and back Saturday, which is yeah. it's just sick and travel other, other than that, like, but it's, it's fine. It's, it's tough. Fine. It's like, the, like, I suppose coming from West Cork, it makes it definitely an easier travel. You probably take it, you don't take it as much as what you used to. No, it's definitely a change having to double an hour and a half rather than five hours. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, no complaints about the hour and a half up to Dublin. But. <laughs> Maybe they want to venture to Dublin, it's a completely different story. It is, it is. And are, you, are you flying out from uh, from Dublin then on Friday to Treviso? Yeah, flying out from uh, Dublin on Friday and then back in Saturday evening. 
Or sorry, everyone, midday. Scratch. So it's like very short and sweet, but it's. Uh, <coughs> no, it's one of the, like it's, it's normally easier if you fly out there at night four and then end up coming back in night of the game or whatever that evening. It's that easier, more full full weekend off then, you know. Yeah, well, like Joe, this year, I suppose you've travelled a good few times. That does the the twenty fourth man, as you as you say saying the messages, Joe, as Joe for Heineken uh, Champions Cup and Heineken, Heineken Cup days are gone, and then you're getting your, your good space of time within playing in Pro Fourteen, which is huge. Like you're, Joe, you, know, you turn around, you're still only twenty one. Like and how many roughly how many caps do you have under your belt now? Uh, twenty. Yeah, twenty now. So it's or my twenty first off you know this weekend, and that's. 21st to 21 like so there's there's very few people at that age can say that as well like that you're it's great though as you like as i talked to you there joe during the week like you're saying joe you're feeling good you're joe you're you're playing well like i even checked joe looking at your stats there the last i was checking on monster obi joe kev was actually just saying to me he's like oh check him out like and looking at your tackle count just like it's for a fella that's so young and still enjoy like i suppose as i said to you there the last day as well on the phone was Looking at, Joe, everyone was saying about a prop that they used to only develop when it came to the 26, 27, 28, that that's when they were getting into into form. And then Tyke Furlong came out of nowhere, so at 20, was it 22 or 23, where his name wasn't, you know, big. And then all of a sudden he went on to World Player of the Year. And then you were the young lad, Joe, 21, having 21 caps this weekend. And you've Academy Player of the Year under your belt. Yeah, well, like when you when you get a chance to travel twenty four man, all you want to do is all you want to do is play. Like so, when you get a chance in a pro fourteen and these things, you want to make it count. Like and yeah, especially like with James Ryan and stuff playing so well with Ireland, there's no reason no. why only two or two, maybe two years younger than him you can't play with yeah. the province. And that's it's like, great. Yeah, an example for everyone else. Like and gonna have to roll and wind him. It does, yeah, and like it, you know, I suppose get, getting that experience, as you said, with James Ryan being what's what age is James? He's twenty-three, I think. Twenty-three, yeah. like and you know, like he he had such a good Six Nations as well, like to you know, like you know, watching the Six Nations there. One well, of the games I got to see with with just working here on the Saturdays, which was a bit of a balls, but you know, you get you get to see your highlights. But yeah. uh, just, it's inspiration to look up to him because like. He, you want you, you want that Irish jersey eventually as well. Like that's I suppose that that's one of your goals. Yeah, well, of course. Like, like I played with Jordy, and yeah. just one summer for him, this just changed his whole this whole career. career. Um, like he was an unbelievable player with us at twenties, and then he got that injury. Yes. And he had that full summer at Leinster, and I think you know there's no reason why well, you can't push yourself to be in the same position there right now. You know, even at your age, it's not really an excuse. No, it's so. not. I like that day. It's it, I was saying there even when I. I done the introduction just before you came in as well, and I was saying, well, to like opening up a business at twenty one, it's uh, I know it sounds like Joe. Before people look at you with four eyes and go, what are you doing? Like, but it's I think if you're ready and if you're if you have the ability to, it's it's one of the things that you like you push. Like you look at you there, like how oh, Joe, you've always been a big lad. You're always. Since first year, I know you. <laughs> I was always under, I was always under your shoulder, and I. But uh. No, but like, if you're driven to to succeed as well, like even with you with the business and things like that, like yeah. you have to be hungry to, to, for you to make money and, and to get business. I think you'll always succeed that way. That's correct. It's not yeah. always just knowledge. It's it's sometimes just the drive to actually do something and to make it. Yeah, it's it's it, John, as I said in, in just earlier as well it was passion. It's one word that is like, as what's his name. Um, Ken O'Connell, I'll never forget the day, like the speech that they were all the game, yeah. we were all inside in the dressing room, yeah. we and stand it, up on top of the seat. In St. Creed Street, it was in Creed Street, wasn't it? It was, it was, it was a trial game or trial training, or was it? I thought it was in Fromoy, was it not Fromoy? It was in Fromoy, sorry, it was. We were literally yeah. all just stand up on top of the bench, and he was just in the middle of us all, like, and he was just roaring at us, being like, how much of a big trial this season. I think it was under 16s or something yeah. at the time, like, and everyone was so G'd up, the half people made mistakes, like, and... But I think his, his biggest thing was that literally the more passionate you are, the better you play. And that's not always the case either. No, it's not. It's not because they. You do. Because like, it comes down to, yeah, passion is great, but it comes down to your skill, your time, your effort. It, there's, it, there's a lot of, like, because you see a lot of you, right? You can say, like, it's the same thing when you have a business as well. Like, right? Yeah, you can do as much training as you can, but you have to have a skill set as well within it. And then there's just, I think there's just a lot of factors that Joe, people don't even see, Joe. Uh, just, behind the scenes, the work is ah, you know it's half the battle. Yeah, like, 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 I suppose I've gone through with you. With I've seen you with a broken wrist. I've seen you. 
I'll never forget the time before during the sevens when you uh, was it your, your ankle that time? Yeah, that I broke the like, ankle. I was for the tennis side competition. Literally the last play. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 I never forget it. Like yeah. just it, it was one lad stepped inside you and just the leg got planted and. Uh, it was at the CIT, yeah, I remember Kevin Mullins. They were taking us home, wasn't it? And he was yeah. like sympathising me the whole way home and I just wasn't having any of it. No, at all, at all. And like, because George, like, cause it, that team got picked that time for the sevens, like, and your name was down on it as well, which I think was the, the hardest thing to take. Um, but like, talk to me about, like, Joe, everyone gets injuries. I've done, Joe, my shoulders have never been the best <clears> after it, after playing rugby. Still love it to this day, but like, Talk to me about your Joe, your mental attitude towards, I suppose, driving to get, to get back and recover and then keep going from where you actually went off from. Yeah, well, I was very lucky. I, like, don't touch wood, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I haven't had any major injuries. I think my last injury now was Sinus Most, the last major one, and my yeah. biggest focus was literally just to put on as much size as I could up top to try to compete, because I knew I was getting a development contract for this year, and... The yeah. likes of JK and Billy and Dad and things like that, like they were obviously a lot bigger physically than me and all I wanted to do was try to come back in that 10 week block with like 2 or 3 more and kg. Be competitive, of, yeah. Yeah, be com- compete them easier next year and it's not going to make you know, a massive difference in between three of us uh, physically, do you know? Yes. That was, my, that was my biggest goal really and then I think once you have a goal it makes it a lot easier but I think fellas like you get like constant injuries every couple of weeks like yeah, I couldn't imagine how difficult it is on their mind to actually get back and and, and keep going. Like. Yeah, you've been you've been lucky enough, alright, to be fair, with towards injuries. But like I've always seen your like your determination getting back is what is you, you hit the nail on the stone there saying about Joe, you, know, you have to have a goal. It's down it's, it's simple. Otherwise just it just you just you lose track of, of what you're actually what you're striving for. So then it comes down, down to have like a, have a, a clear goal in your head, it just makes it ten times easier to actually achieve it. And then building that bond I suppose with the S and C and your physio and just like trying to get the most out of them to see right what can I do better to make myself better? Like I, I see there, like Scotty be coming in there now as well, and Joe, and he be explaining about his injury, like and it's it's Joe, it's as you said, it's keeping the mind focused. Like Joe, it's like people can turn so many different ways when when with injury. That Joe, it's 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 one of the <coughs> things that you like you gotta be headstrong with it. Yeah, but well, Scotty's got a long road ahead of him. Yeah, man. he's working ridiculously hard at the moment. Like his biggest thing is probably he probably just wants to lean down and. He's trying yeah. to find some good size on him, you know, especially in his position as well. A fella who's mobile in, in his position is huge. It's huge, like. yeah. And that's is. just the way the game has gone. It's you can't have a, a big heavy prop. You can just scrummage. You need a fella you can pass, run, carry, tackle. You know, scrummaging just won't cut it anymore. Not in, in today's game, like. No, 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 no. Going back actually, there, I suppose we just highlighted it there about your winning academy player of the year. Talk to me about it. Was this uh, like oh, it's, it's crazy? Not, it's, I think to be honest, it's not a shock either. Cause like, it, come on, you've you've been you've been playing well. Come on, you, like you, it's you have to have, have a bit some bit of self praise. We're not trying to be on the cocky perspective of it, but it's uh, it's it players, was. Though, I was just just with Cal Cal yeah. had a great season that year, and especially Liam O'Connor. I remember he got a bad injury, and yes. that was probably one of the main reasons why that helped me to get it, but. Because um, he was having a standing season as well. Which he's back in now as he's well. Back in as which well, is yeah. Because yeah, I saw one of the games where he was playing against with uh, with Khan was one of his first games back. I think it was Contar if I'm wrong, but um, and then to see him draw drafted straight back into the Munster thing, it's 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 huge. Like yeah, but, well, that's uh, how good a season was. Jeez, for the first I'd say twelve games of the season, he was our starter and he had some outstanding games. Like, um, but then he got that bad injury and he was out for a year and a half. Like. And, so as you can imagine, it takes so long to get back into things, you know, back in, yeah. um, to get back into your own regular playing ability, like, but, uh, yeah. yeah, I was I was delighted, I couldn't believe it, like, and mom and dad were so proud and yeah. stuff like that, like, which was nice. Talk to me a little um, about your, I suppose, Joe, your family, I suppose, like, well, I know them so well now from spending that time with you, but, like, Joe, give us a kind of brief synopsis of, of your family, like, because, you know, I know you. Actually, know, we obviously a big family, but, yeah, just seven of us, but, um, Ah, oh, we're so close at Christmas and things like that. Especially yeah. there's such nice times of the year. We don't really get to see each other a whole lot either. But um, especially Christmas, when we're all around. It's always exciting. It's it's nice, you know. Yeah, she had only um, a short space because I remember going for uh, breakfast there with yourself and Kev uh, over Christmas. Like enjoy your only saying that you enjoyed. Yeah, you just don't want to get away from home. Like when you're home no. at all, you want to just spend Stay. as much time as you can, you know. And I suppose you have the girlfriend as well, Saoirse. Saoirse, yeah. So. Uh, we were together now. You're in three months. Uh, she's <laughs> met the family and all that. <laughs> Um, 
Ah, no, it's, it's going well in fairness. I'm that's enjoying that. Like, that's, that's good, that's, that's good, that's good. I uh, suppose, right, moving on from that, big weekend in two weeks' time. So yeah, I booked flights there last weekend for which I'm looking forward to heading over to Coventry. Yeah, that'd be serious like, crack for you anyway. Yeah, uh, I'll have a great crack at all. Yeah, oh, hopefully not. I'll be, I'll be playing. Like, I'm just going to try my best now this week and yeah. give myself the best shot I can, you know? It's, um, like, it's, it, it's going to be a tough game, like, Joe. So unfortunately, I didn't get to see the Edinburgh game. I got to see the highlights of it, but I didn't get to see it live, which was a bit of a bit of a balls. Because like Joy, I had, uh, the landlord son just saying he was like he came in, it was like all oh, they're after winning, and like, it was it was great to hear. Like I was Earl's Earl's he playing out of his skin once again. Like he's uh, the season that that fella's having is something. Oh, we were trying to work it out the other day. I, I think the amount of semi finals and quarter finals he's played, and like when he gets an opportunity now to play, and now ah. he just all he wants to do is lift that trophy, and I think. Yeah. For those kind of guys, it's, it's these these seasons are massive because obviously they're getting older or whatever, and there's people come up underneath them, and they're still playing so well. But all they want to do is win. I yeah. think once you've gone through about ten or eleven losses in quarterfinals and semi-finals, you know you're always yeah. in desperate mode, um, and that's that's the way he's kind of playing at the moment. Um, who are the jokers? Who are the, the messers within within your? Uh, well, we lost him recently. Mick Sherry was yeah. probably the biggest messer. He was hilarious. Like. Um, we probably couldn't say half stuff here. I know what he'd do, like, but he um, he's after going to Gloucester, and he's which is Joe. It's great to see. I suppose Joe for a fellow that went through injury as well. Joe with the time with I suppose with Munster having the Joe the loss of, of hookers for there with a while with Joe through injuries and stuff like that. And I think was cursed injury. Yeah. Frank, like he had two big so- shoulder injuries and he done his knee as well. And he was playing so well before he got injured. He just for him it was just a more thing. Can he actually get back to that same playing playing way that he was and. Just for here, with the quality hookers we have at the moment, with scans, yeah. Reese will be. Yeah. They're all going well as well. He just wasn't getting a chance. He no. just wasn't getting looking, and I think it was a smart decision for him to go across and just give him one last crack for the last couple of months and see if he can pick up another place or another uh, another contract. Yeah. Else. Um, and this was Joe with news on ES. It was yesterday breaking with Van Grand's signing till the 2022. 2022. Yeah, yeah, like that's that's huge for it. And like Joe, I just heard on the radio coming up this morning that he's trying to. Joe keep all his backroom staff, which would be Joe like uh, Fl- uh, Joey Flannery and um, all the rest of the boys. Which uh, Joe, it used to be huge achievement with like what he's done in the last in the last two years as well. Joe, yeah, like in any team, consistency is key. Like, and I think over the last couple of years, with Razzie coming in for a season and leaving, and obviously Axel passing away and stuff. Yeah. I think it's been difficult for the team to to gel. Just, yeah, we'll just get a solid baseline of what exactly what a coach is trying to teach you you know and yeah. trying to pick it up whereas if he gets under two or three seasons of exactly what showing what he, yeah well, it just it just works better you, you get a proper insight to what he exactly what he wants in his well, game what he's doing at idea. the moment though it seems to be it seems, seems to, to be working, working for now anyway yeah it's uh, hopefully, hopefully it'll, it'll get us to a final maybe exactly a trophy. talk to me a bit about I suppose other things that you've done outside of outside of the the rugby the rugby ground like you've so as you've always been, you always knew you played football as well. It used to be, yeah, used to I played with play Collins for a couple of years, but actually we were just doing too much like driving at the time. It was like I was trying to play under 17s with Munster, and then I was making the minors and under 16s with Collins, and it just wasn't working. Mom was doing a ridiculous amount yeah. of driving, and um, for me it was always going to be rugby because I was never that good at football. Again. Yeah, yeah. So with football. Was it ever? Uh, it was never my strong suit. Now, in fairness, we could all say that. Uh, I know I was probably better at the hurling, but obviously where we come from was very little, very little hurling, just all football. And with all the driving, mom was doing at the time. It just it didn't. It was never going to be my first choice, and rugby was the first choice. So I had to kind of make a decision around sixteen, um, whether to go to rugby or the, the football. And obviously, I went to driving. Um, but a funny question, I suppose, because knowing you the way from from I suppose first year, like. Knowing you from school, this was a uh, many of them, many of the boys had said, "Don't know why you have such good feet today." With uh, with you, did you did know a bit of set dancing, didn't you? <laughs> so much, yeah, yeah. Uh, Shaman was always keen on us to do either Irish dancing or music, and I was never I, too I musical. I saw the on. Was that recently as well, wasn't it? It was. I get the bash to on, but I was never too musical. So, mom kind of set myself and Josh up to the to set dancing when we were younger, and I did that till I was what I don't know, second year maybe. Um, yeah. I won't do you have any I've actually probably more medals at dancing than I do with rugby at this stage um, with trophies and stuff and with the Bantry show and things like that um, so that's where the quick feet have come from so is not that's been all kept a secret until now <laughs> yeah until now <laughs> right. I'll show you the back 
and then I'm going to go into the styling and we'll close it off then just after the styling and stuff like that. Sweet so, as. Is that yeah, right for you? That's perfect, bud. There yeah, you go, man. Spin it. We used to do it you now at this stage, and it's uh, yeah, it's been a few years practice now. Yeah, it's uh, a bit of a change since uh, since I was first doing it. I've been doing a V cut, and then I'm trying to bring back in the mullet then as well. You're like, uh, it's slowly coming back in. There's actually a few lads. There is there. Was, I saw was there one or two of the boys that are over in Boston had it. Yeah, Keenan Knox and Sean O'Connor has this. Reese uh, recently got it as well. Um, so you actually slowly could be making influence. Trying, trying to get it, trying Bring to get. It back s- in. Uh, it's. I suppose then I suppose seeing when Ireland beat New Zealand in in uh, the Aviva, there was a lot of the, there was not a, the lot of the New Zealander boys had it as well, which was uh, I suppose that kind of set a bit of a tone as well with the boys to have, get try and get it, try and get it back in and get it back going. I suppose. Back stylish. Would you ever go back to the V? No, I don't. <laughs> <no. laughs> I don't. I'll see. I don't know if I'd be allowed. Spoil the woman be given out to you. Shouldn't be happy. No, I can imagine. I can imagine. Two seconds there now, we'll just finish off. Perfect. Perfect. Fanine, thank you very, very much for coming in and this was getting travelling down from Limerick as well. And being introduced for my first podcast. Thank you. Cheers, bro. Thanks for having me. This is the Kiwi Cuts podcast. Thanks for listening.